I'm Adrian Graham. I'm a cloud solutions architect for media and entertainment, working in LA right here. Spent 20 years here, not here, but spent 20 years in visual effects. Some of it here, some of it working with people in this room. Uh, I was a cloud, I was a pipeline uh, engineer and an effects artist, so I blew things up. That's what I, digitally, digitally. Please don't quote me on that. So um, I came to Google, and it's my job to figure out how to do all that stuff, but on the cloud. So it turns out it's not trivial, but we walk you through it. And there's some really amazing things that you can gain from running on the cloud. And I'm going to show you a bunch of those things today. It can help you run faster, cheaper from anywhere in the world with an internet connection, which is really compelling. I'm going to show you three things today. The first thing is only possible on the cloud. All right? The second thing is only possible on Google's cloud. And the third thing, where do you point this? Ah, is only possible in LA on Google's cloud. And I'm going to show you some really cool stuff. Let's switch to the demo machine right now. And that's the demo. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> uh, for the non-nerds in the audience, this is a uh, Unix shell, a process monitor. And there's six fluid simulations running on this virtual machine right now. This is a virtual machine in a data center with, count them, 160 virtual CPUs. It's a 160-core machine with almost four terabytes of RAM. Thank you. So we can run these massive simulations. They could be a render. They could be a simulation. And they don't have to be visual effects. They could be uh, you know, oil and gas exploration, any type of uh, you know, massive compute scenario that needs a ton of cores and a ton of memory. Um, but in this I example, uh, I'm, running, um, I'm running six Houdini fluid simulations concurrently. They're CPU-based. And each fluid simulation is simming 2 billion particles. And that's going to generate a lot of data. So where does it go? We're writing it all to a cloud file store instance, 64 terabyte instance, all hitting it at the same time. Uh, and we're, you know, it's, it's, we're going to see why it's important in a second. So this is really interesting. I don't just have to have one. I can't just have one of these machines. I can have as many as I want. Uh, and they can all be managed in the cloud. And all your data is stored and managed in the cloud. Um, the last time I you know, remember doing this back in production, um, <clears throat> you had to simulate somewhere. And the data had to be written locally because the network is only fast. It wasn't fast enough to slurp in all that data, write it across an NFS mount. And then you had to transfer the data somewhere. And if you've ever had to transfer terabytes of data, you'll know what I'm talking about. You don't need to do that in this workflow. So let's have a look, a, a little bit of a closer look at this. Um, and actually, Tad had a bit of a teaser earlier. These are the simulations that we ran. These are just sewed up uh, quick, uh, quick times of, of what you were seeing. But let's have a look at this data live. So I'm on a virtual workstation right now running Houdini. And th in this case, it's a Linux virtual workstation um, in a data center, in a Google data center. And I've got GPUs attached to this machine. And it looks and feels just like a standard Linux workstation, but it's not under the desk. And it's not running on my laptop. I'm using uh, Teradici's PC over IP uh, uh, remote desktop protocol, uh, which you can see uh, Teradici has a booth outside. You can go check out, get a, a lot more detail about it. But in this instance, this virtual workstation has four NVIDIA P100 GPUs attached, which blows my mind. You can have more than one GPU in your machine, no big deal, but you can have four NVIDIA P100s, which are crazy powerful. And if you want, you can have up to eight V100s in a virtual workstation, which is like smoke starts coming out of the ports of your machine and everything. So uh, I'm running this uh, interactively. Um, this data is being read live off the file store, the same file store that I'm writing all that data to from that sim machine, which is a separate ma uh, virtual machine. I will, I will tell you that. Um, so yeah, uh, this data is massive. I don't have to transfer it. I don't have to transfer it to this machine. I'm reading it directly across NFS. And I can do this quickly because it's 700 megabytes a second uh, of performance shared across any number of workstations. So I have generated all this data, and we can sort of visualize it in Houdini. But let's go and look at how to render this. So I'm going to use a different package this time. Some of you might be familiar with it. It's called Maya. 
And again, this is running on the same virtual workstation that I was running the Houdini, uh, that I was looking at the Houdini uh, simulation on. Um, in this case, I've got a meshed simulation, which I'm reading directly, again, off the file store. And this thing, this is a pretty big Alembic mesh, uh, Alembic cache. This is about six gigabytes. And I could just scroll through it however, I, you know, however fast I can read it. And this isn't local data to the virtual workstation. Again, it's on the file store. So let's turn on rendering. And in this case, I'm using V-Ray from Chaos Group, again, one of our close tech partners. You can see them outside. Talk to them a bit more about how we're doing this. But this is GPU rendered. Um, I'm really interested in, in GPU accelerated renderers and simulation engines. There are other uh, fluid simulation engines, by the way, that are GPU accelerated out there. So you could take advantage of that as well. Um, but for those of you who don't know, GPUs are faster at a smaller set of things because they have a much higher core density. Um, and they can accelerate workloads like rendering. And this is an interactive render, by the way. I'm tum able to tumble around in real time. And this is uh, V-Ray uh, RT, which uh, resolves immediately. Um, and it's running on the GPUs. So yeah, this is fast and smooth. And it's using the, all four GPUs 100%, but it could be even faster. And yeah, I could. what's awesome about GCP is that I could take this workstation, stop it, add more GPUs, restart it, and all of a sudden, I've got more resources. But hey, this is the cloud. So why don't I deploy a whole cluster of GPUs? So we'll stop this guy, and we will go into the V-Ray settings, and we are going to turn on use distributed rendering. So it doesn't look like much, because I haven't rendered yet. But I could just specify a bunch of IP addresses of other machines running in my Google project that have GPUs on them. And lo and behold, those will now serve as my render workers as opposed to my local machine. In this case, there's uh, 10 virtual machines, each with four GPUs attached, meaning they are, there's uh, 40 GPUs, uh, 40 GPU cloud or cluster rendering this. Thank you. And you could see it's, it's markedly faster. And I'm not limited to 40. I could have tens, hundreds, I don't know. You could have thousands of GPUs all working on your, the, you know, one render. What used to take hours to click one, you know, render one frame and wait for it to update, now you could just deploy a whole bunch of GPUs. And again, you deploy them as you need them in groups that are, you can easily control the size of them, scale them up, scale them down. And when you're done, you turn them off, and you're not paying for them. So, this sort of brings me to my second point. How is all this possible? And how is it possible that Google Cloud Platform can do this? And I just want to show to you the fact that I am running this all on the same workstation. Uh, we can just put them side by side. Um, so it's because of the network. The speed with which these virtual machines can talk to each other is enormously faster than any other network out there. 32 gigabits per second is this interconnectivity speed between virtual machines. That is faster. And I'm going to say it. That's faster than AWS, which does only five. And Azure can do 30, but it's with a crazy expensive machine configuration, so it's not consistent across all the other uh, all their, their products offered. So yeah, I'm, I'm interacting in real time, and it's fun and interactive and smooth and fluid and everything. And that brings me to my third point. Why is this only possible on Google Cloud in LA? It's because we're less than two milliseconds away from the data center. Two milliseconds. So that's going to make it seem that's going to make it seem like, like, the, like you've got this massive workstation under your desk that doesn't generate tons of heat and cost you money and electricity and HVAC and everything. So when latency is this low, you could be a texture painter, and you could be painting with a tablet, and you could be, you know, th there's, this, there's this notion of something called artist fatigue is this term where what you're doing with your hands does not match with what you see on the screen. And when you lower the latency to that level, you don't experience it. So yeah, you could be a texture painter. You could be a modeler tweaking tiny vert uh, movements. You could be uh, an editor scrubbing 4K footage, and there won't be any image tearing or anything like that. Um, on another cloud, that would lag. And not just due to higher latency, where our network speed is two orders of magnitude faster in these VM to VM communications. 
And there's something I didn't tell you about. There's what we have called local SSD, which is super fast, cheap, local storage that you attach to any VM, and it's up to 700,000 IOPS, which is as fast as DR2 RAM. So if you could imagine having three terabytes of RAM on your local workstation that you could just read and write to at the speed of RAM, it's just unbelievable. Um, this wouldn't be possible in any other cloud. The next closest cloud is around 20 milliseconds away. So we're the only public cloud in Los Angeles. Um, the last thing I want to point out is it feels like you have a local workstation under your desk. But what was really interesting, what PH said earlier, was that everything's carbon neutral. And everybody's coming up to me saying, oh, yeah, well, it's great that you can get all these, G these GPUs running, but they run so hot, they use so much electricity. It's, you know, you're, you're basically you know, using as much electricity as, as you know, any person could ever use. Well, if it's all carbon neutral, you don't have to feel bad about it. So you could scale these machines up and down as you require. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to show you, those three things. So thanks very much.